<laughs> but uh, I went in and I looked at they had a they had a, an accounts book of, of, of the the tax people were paying the schedules that kind of thing from the 1940s. And I think it was for Cork City or whatever. And you know you could you could look at it and you could see the way tax was collected then. And the obvious the fact that it was even in a museum in the first place was because things are done so much differently now. But I don't think we fully appreciate when we look back in 25 years just how much we need to change the system now based on all those things you're talking about, even down to you know a better understanding of, of what journeys do, do people take in their daily lives. Where do they go from and to? They go from and to work, which is kind of how the bus network is, is structured. But they go to hospitals, they go to cinemas, they go to visit friends, they go out at night. There's, you know, there's a whole range of, for even on that one spec, there's a whole range of information that the state doesn't have that it needs uh, or that the, the providers of public transport need. And, and likewise, we need to instrument or make measurable uh, our use of water, our use of carbon, our use of road space. We need to digitize the infrastructures underpinning our country in the same way we've digitized our telephones. Uh, you know, we've just done that one thing and look at all the applications right down to YouTube that we're, we're, we're dealing with now. We, we need to do the same with a whole range of services and I, I think we're going to look back. Well, I'll, I'll take an example though, for instance, of, 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 of balancing and the decisions people make. Let's just say, I, I live in Donny Carney. I have a, a host of buses that I can choose from. And uh, where else do you live? Smithfield. Okay, so you don't even need a bus. Yeah. Okay. But I can get the Lewis as well. Or a bus. Okay, and, and you have all these choices. Now let's pretend that there's there's someone watching and they're from uh, in the Wicklow Mountains somewhere, and there is a bus. That bus route probably runs unprofitably versus the Lewis, or versus the bus that goes by my house. Mm -hmm. So, do they accept in a mature way that it it just it isn't the same thing? as an inner city trip, and therefore they pay more. Having said that, they have the rights and benefits that go with living in the country in a nicer area than, than, than me in a council house in Donny Carney, but equally, are they willing to, to, to pay more for that? Or do we use systems that basically have this smoothing effect by making everybody pay and rationing out services at the same price? Well, I, I just wonder, what's your feelings on that? And the same thing goes for so much because it, it, no matter where you build a house in Ireland, you know, they have to provide a telephone line to it if you order one. Yeah, I, I, and, and, and these are these are public services that have to be paid for, and and, and in fact, they they're disproportionately expensive in some areas. They might not even have a telephone in some areas if if, if that rule didn't exist. So so how do you how yeah. do you do that? And I, I think you're right. I I think they're less economic questions than they are political questions. There are questions about what is a fundamental human right. And in Estonia, I think it is a fundamental human right is, is access to the internet. So, uh, just like our, our phone line example there, you know, you, the government must step in if there's something missing and you can't access the internet from where you live. Um, but it, it brings a broader question, which I don't think people probably fully consider the implications of. If you look at the U.S., um, uh, you know, Florida. A lot of uh, Florida and, and probably the, the whole south, uh, you know, the southeast coast of the U.S. very prone to uh, to, to weather-related um, what disasters. And there's a there's a federal disaster relief fund. Now, what that essentially does that people are only kind of probably realizing in the last generation is it subsidizes people to live in areas where it's probably not socially optimal for them to live. You know, if you were being hit by a hurricane every single year and you know the state pays for certain aspects of the rebuilding every single year of the roads and the shops and whatever it might be um, that's someone in Vermont or someone in some entirely peaceful you know, disaster free area uh, and they're they're having to subsidize that and obviously you're not banning people from living in Florida but you're, you're in effect currently subsidizing them and it's obviously on a much smaller scale than Ireland because we don't have those problems but it's it's the Wicklow Mountains or the Connemara bus route um, versus the versus the, the person who lives in Dunne County or Smithfield, and uh, and we need to know that we're making these choices. And I think often we we are left with a legacy system, as you say, and we don't know whether or not we need it anymore. But what, what do you think would be the reaction if you, if people were told if you live outside of a certain zone, you actually have to pay something of a, of a commercial cost of transport? 
Yeah, I think. The, well, I, I, I can tell you straight off, there'd be uproar. Yeah, I was just thinking but, but, if you could survey the people who live in the cities and see would they be. If I could get a trip for 60 cents because I'm taking a city route instead of 160, which, which it currently costs, which is in, in essence a transfer to the unprofitable route, I'm in favor of that. But but someone else somewhere has, because, to, yeah. has to make up, up the difference. Winners and losers, yeah. Um, and I, I think part of it is, is is integration of thinking, so that you know the person who lives in in Wicklow Mountains is making a, a, a conscious choice in relation to certain public services they will or won't have, or at a, a particular cost they will or won't have. Um, but it, it's also, I think, to, with the under, understanding the consequences of one's, one's actions as well. It's, at, at some point, it, the, the government can't be doing everything for you. you have it, to see, I, I'd love to have the views that you get in Wicklow. I, I'd love to have the quiet neighbourhood that you have in Wicklow. Uh, but I don't. Uh, and so it's just it's something that I ponder is, what is the mature way for people to say, I'm responsible for my own actions? And, and how do you roll that out in a country where you've seen... What, what amounts to statism in many ways? Healthcare is all state. Yeah. State run. Uh, our, our education is all state run. I mean, if you look at, for instance, economics being the topic of, of the day, and a lot of the, the economic comment, much of the people making it actually work in universities, uh, and they're some of the worst run organisations financially in this country. Uh, but hospitals, schools. Our military, our roads. Our, as a matter of fact, uh, anything that is is somewhat fundamental is all state-run, and it doesn't actually need to.